market. What kind of oil price do you feel like is still embedded in uh, market expectations for energy names? You know, I, you know, again, our, we have a great energy team led by Jason Gamble. Jason recently had a note out talking about oil prices and the potential for, you know, a little bit more challenging to get to a target at the end of the year of 57, 60 bucks, depending on which one you're looking at. And so I, I think, you know, again, it's not necessarily oil as opposed to the sentiment in the group. We continue to see outflows from ETFs. Mm -hmm. We still see no one wants to step up and own energy here. It's such a small part of the small cap benchmark. You make a good point on, on high yield. If you have a little bit of um, a pickup of high yield spread widening out, that's bad for the mom and pops because their balance sheets right. are still in correction mode. They're getting fixed. And so you still have the downside risk there for the smaller names to underperform the larger names. Nonetheless, OPEC's chief is still pounding the table. He's still optimistic. OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Barkindo spoke earlier to Bloomberg. The fundamentals at the moment continue to show us that we are on the right course, uh, that we are on the path to achieving our objectives of drawing down stocks from these unsustainable high levels to the five-year industry average. Stuart, do you buy it? You know, it's not for me to decide, but I, I think if you look at dividend futures, which is a key derivative instrument that we follow, they have actually showed a slowdown in, in growth expectations, so the market is not buying it. And from that, you know, I, I look earlier in the year when oil was, uh, was rallying a bit, the 2018 versus 2017 implied growth rate was more than 8%. Now it's back below 7 So uh, on that basis, you know, energy is a key contributor to the S&P's dividend. Over 10% of the dividend is from just the energy sector, even though it's only about 6% of market cap. So if you look at dividends underperforming the S&P broadly, which they have uh, in the last two months, I think the market's telling you they don't buy it.